We availed ourselves of photographic techniques which were not available, uh, well, they're available, but were not used in the analysis of the foam strike uh, because it was not assessed as being uh, so critical. Based on the analysis that we've done in every discipline, we have reached some agreement on what happened. The enhanced pictures revealed something so unlikely that no one had ever considered it. It was clear that no one should have jumped to the conclusions early that the fragile, easily damaged tiles were obviously the place where the damage occurred. The foam hadn't struck the fragile black tiles underneath the wing. It hadn't even struck the white tiles coating the bulk of the shuttle. The foam had struck the wing's edge, the area covered by the ultra-strong gray carbon panels. leading edge, the reinforced carbon carbon, is hard. It, it's like a rock. And for foam to have damaged the RCC enough to cause an accident still surprises me. If true, this was a deeply disturbing discovery. The gray panels were so critical to the shuttle's survival that they had been thought to be virtually indestructible. The idea that these panels could be breached had never occurred to anyone. So the investigators decided to reenact a foam strike on the leading edge of the wing. They took the wing off another shuttle and set it up in the lab. For a whole month, scientists bombarded it with large chunks of foam. Strike after strike, the damage to the gray reinforced carbon panels was recorded. In the end, there was no doubt. foam really must have destroyed even this most critical part of the shuttle. They could even work out exactly where it had occurred on Columbia.